factors and multiples. Just before we start, just a reminder that there is a notes tracker available for this video. If you just check the description below, you get a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we're just going to start with a quick definition. Um, now factors are numbers which can be multiplied to give another number. So basically we're looking for pairs of numbers which we can multiply together which will give us a single value. And so if we do this as an example first with the number 12, um, what we should always do is begin with the number 1. Because 1 times the number itself, so in this case 12, will always be a pair of factors. That should be the first pair that we come up with. So 1 times 12 is 12, so 1 and 12 are both factors. As we work through, we should be trying to do this in a systematic way. And therefore that means try the next value. Does 2, uh, can we multiply 2 by something to make 12? Well, 2 times 6 is 12, and therefore 2 and 6 are both factors of 12. We should then try the number 3. Can we multiply 3 by something to make 12? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. Next, I would try 4. But if we look in our list, 4 is already there. That is actually the sign that we have come to the end of our list because we've worked all the way down through the values and then all the way up. Because we've hit the same value in both lists, we know we've finished our list of factors. So we'll try the same for 18. The first pair of factors we should always have are 1 and 18. So 1 and itself. Now, next, we will try 2. Does 2 multiply by something to make 18? Well, 2 times 9 is 18. We would then try 3. 3 times something to make 18? Well, that would be 3 times 6. Then you try 4. Does 4 go into 18? Well, 18 is not in the 4 times table, so 4 does not work. So then next, you would try 5. 5 times something to make 18 doesn't work. Therefore, the next number we would try will be 6. Does 6 go into 18? Well, yes, it does. It's already in our list. And so again, there's our proof. We've got all of the factors that we need. Of course, we've gone all the way down and then started working our way back up. So then lastly, with the number 16, where should we start? As though always, 1 and itself. Then we try 2. Does 2 go into 16? Well, 2 times 8 makes 16. Then we would try 3. Does 3 go into 16? Well, if we went through the 3 times table, we would hit 15 and 18, but not 16, so 3 does not work. And then we come to 4. Um, how many 4s make 16? 4, 8, 12, 16. So it's actually 4. And so this is quite a special case. Because this time, we don't actually have a pair of factors. We just have 4 times by itself. Now again, if that happens, that is a clue, just like in the previous examples, that we've hit all of the factors we need because we've worked our way down. And then we're working our way back up. So our second definition uh, today is of multiple. Um, a multiple is the result of multiplying a number by an integer and therefore we're just basically here looking for times tables. Um, so when we are dealing with multiples we're often asked to list multiples um, but generally we won't be asked to write them all because that would be impossible. It would go on into infinity and therefore Generally, we're asked for five, uh, five multiples, something like that. So we're going to go for the first five multiples of six. And it's very important that the very first multiple is six times one, which is six. The second multiple will be six times two, 12. Six times three, 18. Six times four, 24. And six times five, 30. And like I said, that could actually go on forever and ever and ever. Multiples of 11. So again, we need to begin with the first multiple of 11, which is 11 times 1, 11. And then the second multiple of 11, 11 times 2, 22. 
and 33 and 44 and 55 and again could go on and on and on multiples of 15 well in 15 the first multiple of 15 is 15 and then we just need to keep going up in 15s now if you don't know your 15 times table the 15 times table is just adding 15 every time so 15 plus 15 would be 30 30 plus 15 would be 45 45 plus 15 will be 60 60 plus 15 will be 75 and again that would continue on and on so once we are familiar with multiples and factors and what we can be asked to do is to find the lowest common multiple or the highest common factor between two numbers um, now the lowest common multiple that would be the smallest number which is in both times tables the highest common factor would be the largest number which is a factor of both now there is a small um, uh, small feature of this lowest common multiple just from the word lowest it suggests it should be quite a quite a small number and from highest common factor it suggests it should be a big number but actually it's the exact opposite because we are dealing with multiples here that means times tables means getting bigger so actually this is going to be a big number the highest common factor must be a number which would actually fit into the numbers and so it must actually be quite small so let's have a look at answering a question so a blue light flashes every six seconds a red light flashes every eight seconds they both flash at the same time after how many seconds will the next flash at the same time and so what we need to do here is we just need to make some lists so we'll have our blue light our blue light would flash at six seconds and then it would flash again after 12 and again after 18 and 24 and 30 and 36 and again that could keep going on and on the red light well we know that one flashes every eight seconds so it would flash at eight and then at 16 and 24 and 32 and 40 and again that could continue on and on but what we were looking for is the first time that they would both flash together and so we need to have a look at our lists and see is there a value which is in both of those lists well 6 and 8 12 and 16 18 no but 24 is in both lists and so the first time that they would both flash together would be after 24 seconds and 24 is the lowest common multiple it is the smallest number which is in the six times table and the eight times table for the highest common factor question it asks that there are 12 girls and 16 boys in a class the teacher wants to make groups with equal numbers of boys and girls how many boys would be in the biggest possible group so we need to have the same number of um, girls and boys in that group therefore we need to think how could we split up the 12 girls well the 12 girls could be in a group of one or a group of 12 a group of two or groups of six in groups of three or in groups of four the 16 boys well they could be in groups of one or a big group of 16 groups of two or groups of eight or they could be in groups of four now the question was um, how would we have the same number so what we are looking for is common factors so we could say well let's just have groups of one boy and one girl that would work we could say well let's have groups of two girls and two boys or we could say let's have groups of four girls and four boys 
What did the teacher want? Well, how many boys would be in the biggest possible group? So in this case, we are looking for the largest common factor, the highest common factor. And so the biggest one, which is in both lists, is four. So our group would be four boys and four girls. And so we come to the exam question. This came from the Edexcel paper in June 2018 and foundation paper one. So a non-calculate paper. Um, and actually we've got two different questions from that paper. So factors and multiples came up a couple of times throughout that paper. Um, in the first one came quite early on and it just asked us to write down the first even multiple of seven. So the first thing is we need to be looking at that word multiple. Multiple means the times tables. So we're dealing with seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, and so on. But the key word there was the word even. So we want to look at our numbers and decide which ones are our even ones. Well, seven is an odd number, 14 is even, 21 is odd, 28 is even, 35 is odd. And so we're only dealing with either 14 or 28, but the other key word there was first so the first even multiple of seven would be 14. now in this question um, a common mistake would be to write down the number seven because people had missed uh, misread the question and had missed out the even part um, and just wrote down the first multiple of seven so just be careful when reading all exam questions in the second one, um, it asks us to write down an example to show that each of the following two statements is not correct. Now, I'm only giving you one here. Um, so we're just looking at each of the following statement is not correct. The factors of an even number are always even. So we need to prove that the factors of an even number are not always even. And so actually, we can take a quick look from what we did above. We got an answer of 14. 14 is an even number but are all of the factors of that number even well let's have a look what is the first factor of 14 it's 1 and 14 now that is evidence enough because straight away we have a factor of 1 but if we also went through and looked at 2 and 7 well there we go we have a lot of evidence because in the number 14, half of its factors are actually odd. And so as long as you've given a even number and shown that its factors may have an odd number in there, you've done enough to answer that question.